Alrighty. Um, with that, I'd like to see if we could entertain a motion to go ahead and approve the comprehensive plan short-term work program um, with the uh, with the understanding that there will be some additions, possibly to parts and rec, and then for, for some other input from citizen input. We're not done working on this, but we think it's time to bring it before y'all. I have a question. Good. Ms. I'm looking at the short term and the bigger copy here of the report and accomplishment. And I guess the thing that jumps off the page at me, and this is where it becomes political, like on page 1, 1.3.1, funding and support for Metro One Young Professionals, um, I see a lot of things that say funding. How are we going to fund it? Where does the funding come from? You know, at what point is this just, um, it's a pretty complex plan. And there is a considerable amount of opposition to the 2030 plan floating around out there, especially in certain political groups in this community. And I'm concerned that we we tire, you know, we need to plan, but we, we become so specific that we tie our hands. You know, we become enslaved to the plan. I know you say you're still that we're still trying to work out kinks and all those things, but I'm reluctant to put a stamp of approval on this till I, I know more specifically. Um, when we talk about funding something, where's the funding come from? And what does this do to, to future planning if in 2020 we want to say, well, you know, we, we've been working on this plan for 10 years or nine years, and realize that we're going down the wrong road or we need to offer it. Then. What kind of money have we lost if we offer it? This is. I'm thinking out loud as much as anything. I, I have a hard time supporting a lot of this. Just simply because it's too much big go, plain and simple. All of that? Understood. Well, the answer is varies. Right. This, where the funding kind of, <laughs> that partner varies. B-A-R-I-E-S. I could probably address that. You're looking at 1.3.1. Right. If you look at under responsible party, that's the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. This is an item that they have from the previous years that is simply carried over for two more years. And I think that's the sunset date for that program that was initiated by the Chamber. That is not government funding, that is Chamber funding. And their sources are varied. That's where the Chamber will be at But all these cultural programs like 1.2.1, City of Valhaus is responsible for that. Um, Adult retirement communities. I understand promoting an area, but when we start using taxpayers' money to do these things, um, we start becoming advocates. The chamber, I realize, is not that's 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 a business entity. That's not a governmental entity. I'm a member of the chamber, and I understand that. And that's the proper, for, for example, I gave there a moment ago, that's the proper place for those things to come from, come from within the business community, but when we have city government or county governments funding these things, um, multicultural programs and all this kind of stuff, you know, I'm a little reluctant to do that because it's using taxpayers' money for things like that. It's just is my comment. The rest of the commissioners may feel differently, and that's, that's fine. But when I look at all this, it's a lot of it's a lot of big government control. I'll let you into that comment. The record. <laughs> right, let me. Um, is there any way, staff? Um, I know you're talking about a tremendous amount of work and a tremendous amount of study to get a little bit more in depth as far as what uh, each and every one of these items and these goals are when you try to break those down so that everybody understands them. I don't think that's something you can do at one meeting. I mean, it, it, 
Quite a chance. Uh, and we have to take we have to take a certain amount of, of leeway in in the folks that we elect. And again, this is my opinion. In the folks that we elect and staff that we have that works on these agenda items to try to put them together for the, for us as citizens of Lowndes County. And uh, there, there's a certain amount of I guess just just has to be a certain amount of confidence that we have to have in staff and in our and, and in our governmental uh, uh, councils, commissions, and, and what have you, in order to um, to get to the, to the final document, which is what I understand right. We are required. This is a state mandate. Did I say that? Comes in from DCA. Every community in Georgia has to have a comprehensive plan. But what what are the uh, the minimal guidelines of this comprehensive plan from the DCA? That's that's what I would like to know. I want to know how much is the state dictating to us that we have to do. They dictate that you have a short term work program that has these categories. Uh, and by categories, I mean responsible party, estimated cost, funding source. Those are requirements. It has to be for five years. You have to list out what your idea is. Keep in mind, this is not a binding thing like a budget. This is an ideas thing for the future. Uh, any expenditure of funds, it's done through a budgetary process. This is simply policy and ideas for the future. Anything that we list here has to tie back to a goal of policy that's stated in the comprehensive plan. That's why the, that first column is there. So the format that you see before you is a requirement from the state. Um, and truthfully, from the state, they actually would like some more detail about funding, if we could possibly provide it. Um, initially, years ago, when they created this revised set of standards, they really insisted on it. There was some backlash through the state because, you know, we could put out an idea that we're going to do this four years from now, but we don't know how much it's going to cost. Right. So the state gave some flexibility there, so we could use words like berries, uh, particularly if it's coming from multiple sources. What, so, help me understand because I'm, as you can tell, I'm pretty ignorant. On the, what the DCA requires as far as things to be addressed, that's what Correct. makes up this, like goal one on population, goal two, economic development. Is this an outline that we use from this, DCA? Correct. These are subject matters like population, economic right. development, natural resources. Those are required subject topics that have to be addressed in the comprehensive plan in some form or another. Comprehensive plan in addressing those topics identifies certain needs or certain things that perhaps we as the community need to be doing. And so those are stipulated out in goals and policies. And then the short-term work program is the implementation of it. So we've identified a certain goal or a need. How are we going to solve it? What are we going to do to help satisfy a need? So like goal number four, natural and cultural resources, that's a state mandate that we have to address through the DCA. Yes, sir, that topic must be addressed. Every topic you see in here that's in those blue header lines, the right. blue lines, those are minimum requirements from the state. All right, now the subheadings under the goals, are those something that, that local communities Yes. Uh, come up with them. Right. So this is something that we've come up with locally, the subheadings, but the actual one, two, three, four, five goals, the blue part, is state mandate. Correct. Something that we came up with in 2006 are those subheadings. Mm -hmm. The state does give some guidance and examples of things that you might, or topics or subtopics to put under those goals. Um, I think some of those were followed. I think we came up with some of our own because, of course, in Georgia, not every community is the same. There's different needs, different attributes. I'm not being a but, smart elder, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious. What if we say we don't want to do it? What if we just tell the DCA, this is a local matter, not a state matter, and we don't want the D, it, the state government telling us these are goals we have to meet. I mean, what they're trying to do is manage 159 counties and all the municipalities within it in the state from a central office in Atlanta. What if we say... We don't want to do it. And that is, and actually under state law, that is an option. But under state law, then this local government loses what they call qualified local government status, which means the local government is ineligible.
for any form of state funding, pass through loans, permits. So you go do it our way, or we'll cut off the funds. Exactly. Okay. Sir, but you have to understand that mm -hmm. the specific, the specific language in the goals. There might be topics, but the local community chooses the specific language. Correct. Okay. So the topic is natural resources, but we have the ability to control what it says, what we will say about natural resources. So we're not as tied to that language as, you know, they make us address a topic, population, but they don't make us say, here's how you'll deal with population. They just say we have to address it. So the language gives us greater flexibility. I mean, we can, we can, we have control over the language. But do they have to approve the final well, say if we approve this, local municipalities in the county approve it, does it have to go back to the DCA for their approval? They've already approved it as long as we don't make any major changes. Um, when we come with a final adoption copy, we simply send them a copy. Uh, and keep in mind, you know, we can change this through an amendment process at any time that we want. The answer is yes. They have to approve it. And, and I'll be quiet. I'm, I don't want to hold a sausage yeah. anymore, but that kind of... <laughs> and actually, they have approved it. They have. They have approved it. We sent a draft to them, right. and that met their criteria. Yeah. We addressed all the topics and things that we needed to address that are satisfied, and they sent us a message and said, proceed. That's right. And the only one that's different right now is Lowndes County, because Lowndes County did not hold the public hearing as required, so we're on a different timeline. And if Ms. Corbin would have given me about until December 13th, she would have seen that because our initial resolution was not the same as the other communities. So we're on a little bit of a different timeline because we have to address that issue. But that's one thing where the county in this in this instance will be handled a little bit differently than some of the smaller cities in Dallas. I'd like to add also, uh, I was involved as a citizen when the comprehensive plan. Uh, when it was put together, when it was originally adopted, uh, as it is, as well as the um, the LDR and the ULDC that was accompanying documents as well to this, how to support of this, if I understand that right. Correct. It's kind of set the guidelines. But with that, we, we had always been told that, again, this was, all of these were living and breathing documents in a sense. Anytime that you had an issue with it, even though it was approved by DCA, you could bring it down, you could discuss that particular item, and as Mr. Martin had alluded to, you can amend it and, and, and adjust it. And I think that's really the key, and, and, and we have talked as this commission through our, our work sessions, uh, you know, for some, some planning and some training, and I think this is probably as good a document as any that we can really stay abreast with and work on each one of these things. And there'll be concerns that have come from citizens that you'll hear in the discussions out there that should come forward to the Planning Commission. And then maybe we could bring it forward as a recommendation of an amendment mm -hmm. for the uh, local governments to, uh, to consider. And that's, I think that's really the way it should be handled. And these documents should be amended regularly, kept up to date, living documents. Right. That are being used. It's just because it says that it's you know 2012 to 2016 doesn't necessarily mean that it's set in concrete. I'm, and I'm a firm believer in planning. I mean, I I plan my day out. I use a planner that has 15-minute increments in it, so I'm pretty pretty rigid with my work. And I I can appreciate planning, and I'm all for it. And I think overall this is something that's good. You know, if you if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. You've got to have a target. I chafe under uh, state telling us what we have to do on a local level. It's flexible, and you know you know more about this than I do since you were involved in. weren't you in Europe on the committee? weren't you that helped put this together? As a citizen, yeah. right? You know, and so to me, that's where it all come from, from the local people, and we set our own goals and our own guidelines, and you know. But I, I'm a little. That's just this is just personal for me, and I think it ought to, I'm a big advocate of control. Well, well, I, mean, I, I certainly would understand, understand that and can appreciate it, and I think... I, I, I respect Bill understand. Slaughter's opinion about exactly. something that I would somebody in DCA office in the lab, you know. Well, uh, and I appreciate that. <laughs> but the reality is is, is that uh, we are required, uh, every
every community in the state is required. Um, it is something that is before us. It is something that we have to address. And, um, and, and really, that's, that's really what it boils down to. It, it is something that's required. If we're going to be qualified and to receive the funding, then we do it. If, if, if the recommendation is that we don't need the funding, then we can make that recommendation and, and deny it, you know, and, and say we don't want to participate. But I really don't think that uh, at this point that that's the direction that this commission needs to go in. So um, uh, I, I think keeping in mind again that the document is something that we can work on. I think it is something that this commission needs to work on. I think it's something that we need to look at regularly. It's not something we could have to spend hours and hours on because if we discuss it in one sitting, you're going to spend hours. You'll spend days on it. But I think if we took it uh, and, and kind of took it a, a, as our responsibility to start um, it, with at least one portion of it and work on that and address it and then if we have some issues then we can bring it back and make those recommendations to amend it. I right. think that's where we're at. Another thing too the commission needs to be aware of is the state itself is in the process of looking at its minimum planning standards. Um, so the format and the requirements for some of these things may be changing in the future. Um, Five years from now, we have to do a complete update of the conference plan anyway. Of course, I hope to be doing amendments in the interim. So when we get to that point, there will not be a huge amount of work to do, but simply another update. Uh, because that's what these documents are intended to be. But just like these, the minimal planning standards that were used to prepare the current plan did not exist before 2005. So likely a few years from now, we'll have different ones anyway. And again, the state process is a living, breathing thing that evolves. So, so with that, if, if uh, and I'll just use Lowndes County for example, if uh, Lowndes County approves their portion of the comprehensive plan, and then at the, our next, our January meeting, it comes back to us and we see an item in it that needs to be amended. We can make an amendment at that point and then it would go back as a recommendation to a proposed amendment. That's so it correct. can be done anytime. And I think again, that's our responsibility to get familiar with the document, realize what's in it, work with it, and then massage it, as you might say, to try to make it uh, a good document that would be good for our community. We need to work with it. That's just my recommendation. Live with it. <laughs> live. Work with it. I like working with it better than I do living with it. <laughs> Work with it or live without it. In the meantime, uh, are we required now to make a motion? Mm -hmm. Technically, you're not required to. Well, we thought it was a good idea. For, first of all, what you saw in September, you know, was a much different looking document with lots of color, lots of changes being shown. Mm -hmm. What you have in your packet now is the cleaned up version, the actual new document to be adopted. Um, there's still a couple minor pieces of input to come in from, like the Parks Direct Authority, City of Bremerton, that do not affect the whole thing, but simply their line items. Um, and they've got to adopt it um, for Bremerton does. So that's that's the point that we're at now. It's well, I know the City of Lake Park did theirs last this meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. So, at some at what point then are are we as a body going to act? It's on your agenda for action tonight. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. To recommend what what's going to change between government. now and next for uh, most January. of these for most of these governments. Yeah. Lowndes County will. Sorry, see, Lowndes County might be able to bring it back up during the January meeting because of the timeline we're on, but by that time, most of the other local governments will be right. able to be eligible to adopt the, the changes. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it,